two, one. Alright, so hello everyone and welcome again to another science video lesson. Then on this video lesson, we will going to talk about physics. Alright, so what branch of physics? So we will focus on mechanics and under mechanics, we have kinematics. Alright, so before I introduce what is our uh, topic for today. So mechanics is the study or branch of physics that studies motion. Alright, motion of a particle, yeah, or an object. Alright, so under mechanics, there are two, uh, two sub-branches. So we have kinematics and dynamics. Now, when we are talking about kinematics, this is uh, the branch of mechanics that deals with motion without the influence of forces. Alright, then on dynamics, these are uh, motion. Alright, we study motion in dynamics that is the in or with the influence of forces all right so those are the di these are the difference or these are the difference between uh, mechanics and uh, sorry kinematics and dynamics all right so what is our topic under kinematics so our topic is all about uh, it's all about an object that is thrown up uh, that is thrown on air all right this our topic has something to do with any object that is thrown on air Alright, so you know what it is. So this is the projectile motion. Okay, so this is part. Alright, so projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion. Alright, that combines the horizontal motion and the vertical motion respectively under the uniformly accelerated motion. Alright, so let's jump right into it and see what is on the projectile motion. All right, so this is now our uh, presentation. All right, so we have the projectile motion. So what is a projectile motion? Or what is a projectile to be exact? Projectile is uh, or anything that you throw on air. All right, so that is a projectile, big or small. All right, it doesn't matter. It will be called as projectile. So the manner of how these objects behave when they are thrown on air that is called projectile motion. All right. So one of the pre, uh, one of the most familiar example when we talk about projectile motion is a rocket. All right, or a missile, something like that. All right. So this example right here, uh, this is a typical example of a projectile, alright, so that is an object that is thrown on air. It can be a baseball, it can be a basketball, alright, so, okay, uh, it can be a stone, okay, it can be a stone. So, so as the object, as, so as the object is thrown on air, that is called a projectile, alright, so, Okay, so we answered this one already, okay, before we start. So what is a projectile? That is an object that moves through air or space, all right? So any object that is thrown on air or space, okay, projectile. All right, so, okay, let's think about first the object that moves in a straight line, all right? So it, in, in what they call horizontal motion, okay, so... What is this horizontal motion? So, if there were no gravity, an object moving horizontally, alright, would continue to move, okay, would continue to move in a straight line, alright? So, if there is no gravity, an object will continue to move in a straight line. The reason why, the reason why uh, objects curved, okay, when they move because of gravity, alright? Now, as long that you are here on Earth, the horizontal motion of the object uh, is bending or curving towards the Earth. Alright, so it means that the gravity has an influence on the object that it uh, interacts with. Alright, so that is the main idea here. But if there's no gravity, the object will continue to move along a straight line following the... Following the Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia, the object will continue to move along a straight line unless acted by an outside or unbalanced force. Alright, so that is in a straight line. So, take note of that, uh, this one guys. So, an object which is... Uh, Okay, for example, in space, an object which uh, doesn't, uh, it is not influenced by gravity, it moves through a straight line and, okay, it will continue to move on that, uh, on that pathway, alright, it, uh, it will continue to move on that path as long there is no uh, 
unbalanced force that will interact on it. Alright, so that is for the horizontal motion. Now, what about the vertical motion? So, obviously, if you throw an object upward, if you throw an object upward, moments later, uh, it will go down. Alright, so why, why does the object go down? Because there's one thing, gravity. Alright, so the, the gravity affects uh, the object that is uh, moving vertically. Alright, so that is why uh, when you throw an object on air, it goes down or it goes back to the ground. Okay, so now if there's no gravity uh, with regards to the vertical motion, if there's no gravity, if you throw an object on air, the object will continue to go uh, upward. Alright, so since because there is gravity, the object that is thrown on air will go back to the ground. Alright, so what do we what can we say about an object drop vertically? Okay, so an object is dropped vertically in y direction, then gravity causes it. What, what happened to your now? What will happen to your object as it goes down? Alright, it will accelerate downwards. Alright, so it will accelerate downwards, so it will have a constant acceleration of uh, 9.81 meters per second. This is our uh, gravitational uh, acceleration, so 9.81 meters per second squared. Alright, so it has a constant acceleration and it will accelerate over time going to one direction, that is downward. Alright, so what if, uh, if we throw the object upward? What if we throw the object upward? Does the gravity uh, has influence on that object? Oh, of course, yes. Alright? So, the gravity has influence on an object that is moving upward. Okay? So, it will, acce it will accelerate alright, upward and eventually it will decelerate once it reaches its maximum height. Then, it goes down to accelerate again. Alright? To accelerate uh, downward. Okay? So, that is for the vertical motion. Alright, so projectile motion is a combination of both worlds. Alright, so we have horizontal and vertical motion. Alright, so if you combine them together with the action of gravity, alright, with the action of gravity of the vertical motion, alright, and the constant speed of your horizontal motion, it will look like this. So the one that we have right here, this one. This is the typical pattern of an object and uh, of an object moving uh, typical projectile motion all right but uh, pattern all right so next one so if we if we have this one so if we have a combination of horizontal and um, vertical motion so this statement says that in the x direction it continues to move a Alright, so constant speed. Okay, so along the horizontal, uh, along the horizontal direction, the movement of an object is constant. Okay, so please don't forget that one. But in y direction, it is not constant. Alright, it's accelerating. Alright, it accelerates downward. So it has, it has a constant acceleration. Yes, constant acceleration. But because of this constant acceleration, it allows the object to accelerate downwards. Alright, unlike uh, on the horizontal direction, all from point A to point B, it has a constant speed of a certain factor. Alright, so that is the projectile motion. Don't forget, this is a combination of X and Y direction. Alright, so, okay, for a projectile, the x velocity is, alright, is independent of y velocity. So, meaning to say, the y velocity will not, uh, alright, the y velocity will not affect what is on the x velocity and otherwise. So, that is independent. So, Okay, the speed in x direction, so in short, in the speed of a in x direction doesn't care what is the speed in y direction? So that makes them uh, independent over each other. So in short, we have a set of formula for x velocity. All right, we have a set of formula for x velocity, and we have a set of formula for y velocity. So we will go over that later on our uh, for our sample problems. All right.
So, why is it that they are independent? So, remember that gravity is pulling in one direction. Uh, and it's only pulling downward. And it's only pulling downward. Okay? So, gravity doesn't pull the object upward or right or left. Okay? It is pulling only in one direction. So, that is why it is not affecting the horizontal motion, which is moving from left to right. Alright? Respectively. Gravity is only moving downward. Alright, so it's uh, it looks like this. Okay, because of gravity, we have your uh, parabolic curve that you have right here, which is called the trajectory. Alright, so this parabolic curve that you have on this picture is called tra tra trajectory. But uh, technically, if there's no gravity, if there's no gravity, the cannonball that you have on this picture will go straight forever. Alright, so it will go in a straight line forever. So, unless it, uh, it is acted by an unbalanced force. Alright, so this is a typical thing about projectile motion. Okay? Next. Uh, remember that velocity has direction. Alright, so remember that velocity has a direction because uh, it is a speed with direction. Okay, to be exact. It is, it is a speed with direction. So, uh, everything that we will have right here, everything that we will uh, deal on, the problems, the examples, are all in vector quantities. Alright? Because velocity itself is a vector quantity. It talks about direction and the magnitude of speed. Alright? So, the mag it contains the magnitude and direction of an object. Alright. So... Now, in this case, so since we have a two-dimensional motion, we can say that we can break down, alright? We can break down the velocity of an object here in projectile motion. We can break it down into X and Y components respectively. There you go. Okay, so when you throw an object upward, when you throw an object on air, alright, so this is the velocity of the object and this is its Y and X component. Okay, respectively, you will compute for the y and x component to get uh, the velocity. Alright, to get the velocity or or you can use the velocity to compute the x and y component to, to be used on other uh, calculation. For example, maximum height. Right, so we have max height over here and uh, range. Alright, so this is very important. These two are very important in computing the max height and range and other stuffs as well. Alright, we have the total time, time at uh, time at the middle. Alright, so things like that. Okay, so velocity vectors. Okay, so okay, let's take a look at the x and y vectors of a projectile. Suppose a cannonball was fired on a cliff so let's say this is a hundred meter high cliff okay so as you can see here as uh, time increases as the time increases as you can see here the velocity of the object on its horizontal direction all right on its horizontal direction the velocity is 100 meters per second and it doesn't change as time passes by meanwhile the velocity in y direction increases as time goes on all right so which which means that on vy the object is accelerating all right so on vy the object is accelerating meanwhile on the horizontal motion or horizontal velocity uh, the object is at constant speed Okay, so that's their, uh, respectively, that is their, uh, okay, so it stays constant and the velocity uh, on y direction increases. Okay, so that is the velocity vectors x and uh, y. So if you happen to notice, so let's go to the simulation. Okay. Now here's in uh, here we are in our simulation. So I would like to thank the THET, all right, on this uh, providing this simul uh, simulation for us, all right. So you can go to their website to download this simulation and somehow uh, donate, all right, for the for for us or for this uh, group to make more of this simulation in the future. 
Okay, so this is what it looks like. So the vectors. Okay, so let's put there the vectors. So we have the, this component and the yellow component over here. Alright, so suppose an object is fired at the cliff of 10 meters. Alright. Okay, so we have an angle here. So we can put any angle over here. So... Okay, so let's have a slow motion so that for uh, for us to see what is this, uh, what does the velocity vectors uh, look like? Okay, so let's take a look. So as you can see, okay, so as you can see the vectors that you have right here. Okay, so let's, let's have another one. Okay. Alright, so as you can see, the y or the x component doesn't change, but the y itself, alright, so the y uh, component, which is the y direction, increases as it uh, approaches the ground. Alright, so this is how the vectors or velocity vectors uh, looks like in a typical projectile motion uh, scenario. Okay, like the one that we have uh, right here. Okay. So this is what the acceleration vector looks like when you have uh, a projectile motion scenario. Okay, so as you can see, it always goes down. All right, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't have any acceleration that moves forward uh, on the horizontal because on the horizontal you have a constant speed. When you have a constant speed, therefore your acceleration is zero. Okay, so that is the vectors, how the vectors look like in a projectile motion scenario. Okay, let's go back to our uh, scene. Okay, so velocity vectors. Okay, now let's talk about the y-velocity. Okay, so just like the free fall, all right, so the free fall is different from projectile motion. A free fall is something that you drop, all right, from uh, a place. All right, uh, uh, a higher place, okay? So uh, an object that you drop or an object that you uh, thrown upward, then you allow it to fall back, okay? To go back to the ground, okay? Something like that. So that is a free fall. Now in projectile motion, it is completely different, all right? In projectile motion, sometimes the object is thrown at an angle, at a certain angle, and this angle, okay, this angle that is... Uh, the reference, okay, in which the object was thrown, uh, it will affect greatly on how the object will behave, okay, eventually. All right, so, okay, in y direction, all right, so in y direction, there is something like uh, this, okay? Now, there is what they call the max height, all right? So this is the maximum height the object can, uh, uh, can reach, all right? When the object is thrown, Alright, so as you can see, the y velocity is starting to decrease. Alright, starting to decrease as it approaches the maximum height. So therefore, at maximum height, the vertical velocity is zero. Alright, so at this point, it is now zero meters per second. Okay, now if you throw your, uh, if you throw your pencil or a ball upward, you will notice that there is a certain point in time that the object will, uh, will stop. Okay, there's a split second that it will stop then before it goes down. So that's the maximum height that we are talking about. Then as it goes down, the y velocity is starting to increase once again. Alright, now this is possible. Alright, so this is possible in all projectile motion scenario. Whether you throw, na, with, whether you throw the object uh, on a place with greater height, all right, so a place with higher uh, on a higher place, or even uh, an object that is thrown uh, on a level ground. All right, on a level ground. So, for example, that uh, yeah, that is a level ground. So, when whenever it is or whatever it is, all right, you still have this maximum height, and the vertical velocity of that object is always zero. Now, notice how the horizontal uh, direction, or horizontal velocity, or x velocity doesn't change over time all right so it doesn't change over time so in short this is a uh, constant so even though in uh, even though in maximum height okay even though the object reach its maximum height it doesn't change to or it doesn't change totally the x velocity all right so the velocity in y direction all right 
decreases, okay, so this part over here, decreases on the way up, okay, and increases on the way down. So just like what we have right here, okay, so just like what we have right there. Now, at the top of the path, alright, so at the top of the path, when it reaches the maximum height, it is always, take note, it is always zero, alright, so this is very important when you are doing computation. Why? It's because if you don't, uh, if, if you don't, uh, if you forgot this one, you will have a problem on finding what is the velocity on the max height, alright, on the maximum height that you have right there. Now, the velocity on the way up, alright, is equal on the way down when you reach the same height. Now, in this case, we have the level ground, so the velocity, this one over here, is equal to the velocity as you go down. Okay, so this one over here is equal to the velocity going down. Okay, so when you reach, alright, as long that you reach the same uh, height respectively. Okay, so next. Okay, so just like what we have right here, uh, this is stunt. Okay, I think uh, this, is a, this is a very difficult stunt. Okay, so... Okay. Hey. Yeah. So... Uh, this is a very difficult stunt without a, you know, without a parabolic motion, without that parabolic curve, alright, that is the signature of your projectile motion, uh, I think it is impossible to put the blocks on top of the head of this person, alright, so, okay, there you go, okay, so, okay, let's talk about this one, so, this uh, problem that we have right here, okay, so in this problem, you were walking at a constant velocity with a baseball and threw it upward, alright, while walking, okay? So the question is, where will it fall? Okay, the ball, huh? the ball itself, alright? So the ball was thrown upward while you are walking, okay, at a constant velocity. Now, uh, where will this ball fall? Okay, so A is in, in front of you, B that is behind you, or letter C right back into your hands. All right, so you can post this video. You can post this video uh, to think of the answer. All right, and play it as, so that you will be able to see if your answer is correct. All right, so what's the answer to this checkpoint question number one? So the answer here is letter. Okay, so there's the other, no answer uh, that is not in front nor behind. The answer is it should land. Okay, it should land back. Uh, land back to your hands all right it should land back into your hands so that's the answer not behind you not in front of you all right so it looks like this okay so now if you throw a ball then you are moving at a constant velocity then therefore it should go back to the place where it was thrown all right so there you go okay let's go now uh, it looks like this Okay, so, alright, so that is, uh, that is a very uh, satisfying stunt. Okay, so uh, next one. Okay, checkpoint question number two. Now, an airplane is carrying a bomb. You know World, uh, you know World War II planes, right? So, it carries a bomb. Then how do, you, how do this pilot be able to know if they, uh, okay, um, if the bomb will land on its right target. Alright, so the, the plane is traveling at 1100 miles per hour east, alright? It is going to the east and it releases the bomb, it continues at the velocity will... Okay, if the plane continues at that velocity, where will the bomb land? Alright, so where will the bomb land eventually? Alright, so let's see. Uh, let's see where will the bomb land. Is it... A. All right. So is it A, directly underneath the plane, a B or behind the plane, and C that is ahead of the plane. So you can pause this uh, for a while to think of the answer, then play it. All right, for you to find if your answer is correct. All right. So the answer here is obviously just like what we have uh, on the first checkpoint question. The answer is letter A. All right. It should be uh, B underneath the plane all right so the bomb will fall underneath the plane all right so despite that the bomb was released 
earlier, right? So despite that the bomb was released earlier, it will still fall underneath the plane because your horizontal motion is constant, all right? Only the vertical uh, motion will uh, affect, okay, this uh, this falling object that you have right here, which is the bomb. Okay, so that is checkpoint question number two. Okay, let's uh, let's continue. Now, how about checkpoint question number three? Now, in this question, there is uh, there are two balls. All right, they are released both at the same height. All right, from the same height rather. Uh, one is dropped from rest, and the other was thrown horizontally. So, meaning to say, the uh, the first ball. Alright, so for example, this is ball number one. Ball number one is dropped from rest. So we need to say it has an initial velocity of zero. Alright, meanwhile, ball number two was dropped uh, with an initial velocity. Alright, so that is going, the, uh, going this way. Okay, so this one is going that uh, way. Now, uh, the question here is which of the ball will hit the ground first? Is it number one or number two? Okay, is it number one or number two? So you just post the question or you just post this video and think of the answer. And don't forget to answer why. Alright, so why is it that the other ball will hit the ground first but the other one is last, so on and so forth. Alright, so let's, uh, let's see. Okay, if you are correct. Okay, so both of them will hit the ground at the same time time. Alright? Both of them will hit the ground at the same time. Now, what could be the reason? What could be the reason? Because uh, they are being pulled by gravity at the same rate. Alright? So, they, they are pulled by the gravity. The red ball over here and the yellow ball over there is affected by gravity at the same uh, rate. 9.81 meters per second squared. Alright? So, they are affected. Both of them are affected by gravity. Okay, so unless the unless the yellow ball is on the moon or Jupiter, so it will uh, it will have greater effect on how the ball behaves on this uh, scenario. Okay, so next. Okay, let's talk about the X range. So what is this X range? All right. So when we talk about horizontal displacement, all right. So the word is displacement. This is a vector quantity. Alright, so this is a vector quantity of position. Alright, so X range. Alright, so range is a horizontal displacement and max vertical height is the vertical displacement. Alright, so this is the vertical displacement. So what are they? Right, so your X distance is called your range and your Y distance is called your height. Okay, the height itself. Uh, this is the maximum height that the object uh, can reach during the time that you throw the object on air. Alright, so the range and height depends on two things. Number one, angle. Alright, so guys, in this uh, okay, guys, in this lesson that we have, uh, we just ignore first everything about a resistance. Uh. So we do not include a resistance here. That will be a you know, that will be a subject for another time. All right, so the other factor here is the velocity. All right, so what velocity is this? This is the initial velocity. It is launched, All right? So it is launched. Okay, so angle and velocity. Let's take a look. Now, uh, what is the effect of the angle? Now, please take note that uh, if you increase your angle up to 45 degrees, right? When you increase your angle up to 45 degrees, that's the time that you can uh, possibly, you can possibly uh, reach your, the maximum range your projectile can uh, travel. Okay, it increases your range. At 45 degrees, that is the max range. Alright, so that is the maximum range that it can reach. Alright, now greater than 45 or less than 45 will decrease the range Okay, will decrease the range uh, respectively. Alright, so uh, there you go. 45 to 90 increasing your angle decreases your range. Okay, so there we go. Right, so that is the reason why, why that, that is the reason why, why, uh, why some rockets are launched at 90 degree angle. 
alright, in order to reach the maximum height because some rockets do not need uh, maximum range. They want to go uh, to outer space upward. So most of the rockets are launched at 90 degrees uh, angle. Alright, 90 degree angle. Alright, uh, if you are launching a missile, alright, if you are launching a missile, uh, 75, 60, or uh, 45 degrees is enough. Alright, now, as you can see here, the maximum height can be reached if you uh, launch your uh, projectile at this angle, 75 to 90. Alright, so things like that. Okay, so next. Uh, if you have a uh, 45, that is the max range, but the height is not, uh, it's not, at its, it's not, you can, you cannot get the maximum height that you want at 45, alright? So, but you can get the max range, right? The maximum range. Alright, next one. Um, at lower than 45, lower than 45, you cannot reach the maximum height that you want, nor the maximum range. Alright, so typically, typically in order to reach the maximum height, you should have the 90 to 75 and 45 degrees is for the maximum range. Okay, so that is for the angle. Alright, so this is what uh, the rocket launch look like. Yeah, so as you can see, it reached the maximum height that they need, alright, in order for the rocket to escape the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so it is not 45 degrees, it is always a 90 degree angle. Alright, next one. Okay, next factor here is the initial velocity. Right, so next factor here is the initial velocity. So be before we go to the initial velocity, let's take a look at the simulation. Alright, so here we are again in this simulation. Okay, so let's take a look if uh, on this simulation it can show us that the angle is somehow can take effect for the maximum height and maximum range. Alright, let's talk about maximum height first. Now, let's launch the... Alright, let's, let's launch the projectile at this uh, angle, 90 degrees. Alright, so let's have the speed at a constant of 20. Okay, let's see. Okay, so let's go. Uh, let's launch this one. So let's remove the air resistance. Okay, let's remove the air resistance and let's put some cannonballs there. Alright, so let's start in 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, so as you can see, uh, that's the... Okay, so... There you go. Okay. Alright, so it goes back straight directly to the, uh, to the cannon. Alright, but if you slightly change its angle to 80 degrees, so will it still have the maximum height? Alright, so as you can see, the 90 degrees somehow, uh, alright, is somehow uh, has a greater maximum height. Alright, it has the greater maximum height compared to Okay, so this one is, okay, okay, so from this point to that point, okay, so that is, okay, so let's measure that one, so that is 22.31 meters, how about this one, at this point, okay, so, there you are. So we need to adjust. So that is 21.84. So it tells us that uh, as you decrease the angle, the maximum height also decreases. Now let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at uh, lower angle. So let's have uh, something like 15, right? Okay, let's have 15. And let's lower down this. Okay. Okay, let's have uh, something like 25, then uh, let's launch that ball. So as you can see, yeah. Okay, it doesn't have the maximum height. So let's uh, measure its, uh, okay. okay. Let's measure its uh, length or displacement. Okay, so at 
25 degrees, that is uh, 31.26 meters. That is the range. Alright, 31.26 meter. Alright, so meanwhile... Okay, why I... Alright. So, that is the range. Now, let's try to... Uh, I will return this one here. Okay, so let's try... Uh, 45 degrees. Let's see if, if the 45 degrees can really surpass the given range that we have right here. So that is 31.24, something like that. So let's see. So these are the vector components. So remember the vector components that we discussed earlier. All right. So now the ball will fall down and let's measure. All right. So it certainly is that at 45 degrees, the maximum range is achieved. All right, so let's try something like 60. Okay, if it is possible to reach that same range at constant speed. All right, so there you go. And let's measure that one. Okay, so that is 35. So, uh, at, uh, 5 meter difference, alright? So, the maximum range can be achieved if you have a 45 degree angle that you have. Okay. Okay, so, let's go now to, uh, to our presentation. Let's continue our presentation. Alright, so what do we have right here? So this is now the second factor, which is called the initial velocity. Alright, so what is this initial velocity? This is the velocity uh, at which the object, alright, was thrown, alright, before it, uh, before it reaches the ground. Alright, so technically speaking, alright, uh, the greater the initial velocity of a projectile, the, okay, so what do you think is on the blank? Alright, so... Probably the farther it will go. Okay, so we have the same uh, the same thought. So farther, right? So now this cannonball will showcase or the difference between an object with greater initial velocity versus the object with uh, less initial velocity. All right, so there you go. Okay, so let's take a look at that on the simulation. So okay, here we are again on this simulation. So let's reset everything. Okay, so that everything is clear. Okay, so... Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, okay, let's take a look at this uh, one. Okay, so let's prove that greater initial velocity will uh, give you farther uh, range. Alright, so let's see. Okay, let's see. Uh, at 15 degree, uh, 15 meters per second... At 15 meters per second, at a uh, constant angle of 45, for example, 45. So, let's see. Alright. So, let's see uh, how far did that uh, object go. So, we have 22.94. Right. So, we have 22.94. Okay. Next one. Uh, how about we increase the speed uh, um, two times? So, make it 30. Okay. So, Will it have the greater range or not? Okay, than the previous one. So let's see. Okay, so we cannot count that one anymore. Okay, so uh, so definitely, all right, at constant angle, all right, so at constant angle, the range is uh, increasing. All right, so increasing at great, uh, at increased initial speed. Okay, something like that. Now, what about at an angle of 90? Alright, so we have an initial speed of 30. So, let's see. Okay, so it's the same thing. It can reach its maximum height at a greater uh, initial speed. Alright, so basically, that's how initial velocity affects your uh, projectile uh, in some ways. Okay, so let's go back to our... So, there we are. So, that is initial velocity. Now, uh, the trajectory of an object depends on how fast it is moving horizontally and how long gravity acts on it. Okay, so as you, as you, uh, as you have seen, 
Alright, as you have seen a while ago, okay, so at, uh, at less initial velocity, okay, the trajectory, so it looks like uh, we will go back again to the simulation, but we will finish this one first. Alright, so at small horizontal velocity, at small initial velocity, the trajectory is somehow shorter. This is the pattern, this is the trajectory. Alright, so it is somehow uh, shorter than uh, at somehow a medium. Alright? Okay, a medium horizontal velocity. Okay, so the trajectory starts to get uh, longer. Alright, it starts to get longer. And at fast horizontal velocity, the trajectory starts to stretch outward longer and longer. The more, the, uh, the more increasing horizontal velocity you have. Okay, so just like what we have on the simulation, we'll go back again on that simulation so as you can see here so this is uh, an an object with uh, so supposedly we have like this okay why y90 okay so all right so the trajectory is completely different so we have shorter all right we have shorter tra trajectory if you have uh, less initial velocity now, if you have a medium, which is 15 meters per second, you have a decent amount of range that you will have. So, the, the trajectory pattern is uh, somehow longer than the first one. And if you have, an, um, if you have a higher initial velocity, all right, if you have a higher initial velocity, the trajectory is somehow longer than the second one or even the first one. All right, so that's the trajectory pattern okay so there you have it so that is the trajectory pattern all right now what if uh what if if there's no earth all right what if there's no earth that will uh or ground all right if there's no ground uh where your projectile will land what does it look like okay what does it look like so guys uh actually if there's no ground for the projectile to land on the projectile will go on revolving around the center of the earth. Alright? It will go around revolving the center of the earth and it looks like this. Now, because of the ground, because of the ground, that's the reason why we uh, often see some trajectory patterns like the one that you have right here. And it looks like this. But if there is no ground, if there is no ground, the broken lines that you have right here, this is the continuation of the pathway of your cannonball. And it will uh, somehow revolve around this center of the earth. Alright? It will, it will revolve around the center of the earth and then goes back again and then revolve. Just like what the planets, alright, revolves around the sun. Okay? So, just like that. Okay. Now, uh, shorter initial or less initial velocity, medium initial velocity, somehow medium, alright? And faster or greater initial velocity, all right, the ellipses, all right, so the elliptical path will be completely different. All right, so that is uh, one trivia. All right, guys, one trivia. If there's no ground on Earth, the projectile that we throw or every any object that we throw on air will certainly revolve around this planet's center. All right, so next. Okay, there you go. So that is the projectile motion and on this part, all right, so on this part, we will solve some, uh, we will solve one problem here, but I have another video for this one that is dedicated mostly on solving projectile motion problems at different uh, scenarios. All right, so let's, let's have this one before we end up our uh, discussion. All right, so let's take a look at this. So a rock is thrown horizontally right of a 100 meter clip and it lands 95 meter at what speed was it thrown all right so how do we how do we solve this uh, particular problem all right so we need all right just like a uh, just like every carpenter all right or a mechanic it needs a toolbox all right so what are the tools that we need here to solve this particular problem uh, the first thing that we need is Formulas. All right, so let's go to our whiteboard. There you go. Okay, so this is our whiteboard. And 
Okay, now in order to solve a projectile motion problem, we certainly need some things. Okay, so that is connected to what they call uniformly accelerated motion. Uniformly accelerated motion. Alright, so, or UAM in short. Alright. So, there are two formulas in the uniformly accelerated motion. Number one is the displacement formula. Right? Displacement formula. And the other one is the uh, velocity formula. Okay, so there you go. Alright. Now, uh, how do we find out the displacement formula? Okay, so what is this displacement formula? Now, uh, we can use this formula. So, I will use a different colored pen. So, I will have blue, right? So, okay, so we have D sub F, which is final uh, displacement, is equal to initial displacement plus VI, right? Or initial velocity times time plus one half A squared. Alright, so there you go. That is the displacement formula. Alright, now how about the velocity formula? So the velocity formula that we use in uniformly accelerated motion is this one. So we have V sub F or final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Alright, now uh, just to give you a trivia about these things, alright, about these things that we have right here. They all came from Okay, it's this formula all came from the basic formula, alright? The basic formula that we know. So we have velocity is equal to distance over time, alright? We have the formula of acceleration which is uh, V sub F minus V sub I over T, alright? And the average velocity, so we have average velocity is equal to V sub F plus V sub I over uh, 2, Okay, so these are the basic formula that give rise to your uh, uniformly accelerated motion. Now, this is a projectile motion. So how do we solve the, how do we, okay, are we going to use this formula in solving the projectile motion problem? Yes, okay, we will use this formula. Now, this time, since the projectile motion is divided into two components, we have the X and Y component respectively. Alright, so we will divide also the displacement and then the velocity formula into X and Y components respectively. Alright, so in the projectile motion, alright, so projectile motion, we have uh, X direction, right? And we have also the Y direction. So I will use this part for x direction and I will use this part for y direction. So I hope uh, the space is enough for the derivation of formula that we will going to do. Alright, so let's start first with x direction. So in the x direction, okay, let's start first with the displacement. Okay, so the displacement formula. So we will replace all d, we will replace with x. So we have x f is equal to x i or x sub i plus, so the vi, alright, so since it is an initial velocity, we will break down to its component, which is also an x, so v sub i x, alright, times time, is equal or, uh, alright, so plus 80, ah, okay, I forgot the one half, alright, one half 80 squared. Alright, so let's see uh, what are the things that we can uh, utilize here. So I will use different colored pen. Okay, so since your object starts from rest, alright, since your object starts from rest, no objects that were, uh, no objects that are thrown, alright, no objects that are thrown starts from, uh, starts moving before it was thrown. Alright, so therefore, our initial distance is zero. Alright, next one. Since the object is moving at constant velocity, alright, constant speed, so it, therefore, constant speed equals zero acceleration, so therefore, we can cancel this one out as zero. So, we, what we remain is this one. So, we have now the first formula, which is x sub f is equal to uh, v sub i x times time. Now, uh, how to get this V sub I X? Alright, so how to get this V sub I X? So, we can get the V sub I X is, uh, by getting the V sub I times cosine theta. 
times the time. There you go. Alright, so with this, uh, we'll use different color pen to box it. So this is our first formula. Alright, so you can use both if you want to. Right, so you can use both. Okay, so this is formula number one. Okay, now this formula number one, okay, this formula number one solves for the range. Alright, it solves for the range or the horizontal displacement. Next, the second formula is for the x velocity. Alright, so the x velocity. So, so let's take a look at this velocity over here. So instead of having v sub f, so we will uh, name it as v sub f sub x. Alright, so v sub f sub x, kasi, uh, this is for x direction or x velocity. Alright, so it's equal to v sub i x plus a t. Alright, so as we all know, we have zero acceleration here because constant speed. So therefore, uh, we can say that, alright, so we can say that v sub f sub x is equal to v sub i sub x. So this particular uh, this particular equation, this one over here, tells us that at any point in your projectile motion spot, alright, at any point on your trajectory, v sub f x is equal to v sub i x. So therefore, it is constant all throughout. If you started at 20 meters per second, you end up at 20 meters per second constant speed. Alright, so this is your velocity. So if you want to compute for the velocity of the projectile at x velocity, so this is the Alright, so this is the x velocity. There you go. Okay. So that is for the I forgot the number. Alright, so this is the second formula. Alright, so this is for the x uh, component of your projectile motion. Alright. So next one. Okay, let's go now to the y component, starting first with the y direction. Okay, so let's replace all d. Alright, let, let, let's replace all d with all y. Alright, so we have y sub f is equal to y sub i, which is initial uh, final height, initial height, alright, final height, initial height, plus v sub i sub y times time. Then, what are we going to use here? Okay, since this is vertical, let's uh, let's be uh, let's make this one simple. All right. Now the gravity, all right. The acceleration of gravity is going or is always going downward. All right. Now what? Uh, okay. So what? Uh, what sign? All right. In a Cartesian plane, is always seen on the on downward. All right. What sign? Okay, is it negative or positive? Alright, so we will use for the G, we will always use negative 9.81. So the negative here denotes the direction it is going down. So meters per second squared. So therefore, we can replace this one to become negative one half G instead of A, T squared. There you go. Okay, so instead of having plus, instead of using plus, okay, I use the negative from the negative 9.81, okay, so that uh, we will have a, uh, not anymore a confusion or difficulty in using this formula. Alright, let's analyze what are the things that we will going to cancel. Alright, so you started with initial height, alright, so initial height, and you ended up with, uh, okay, at final height, so it makes sense that there is, uh, this one can have a va can can contain a value, okay, both of them. So you have your v sub i y, alright. So v sub i y can be obtained by uh, using this formula. So v sub i y is equal to v sub i sine, alright. So sine theta. There you go, all right. So that is how you compute for the v sub i y, alright. Now, times time is equal to uh, minus uh, 1 half gt squared. So, we cannot cancel anything here. So, we will use the same formula. Okay, so there's no such thing as constant speed on vertical, uh, vertical direction. So, this is now the third formula. Now, this is used. This formula is used. Alright, so this formula is used if you want to compute for the maximum height. 
Alright, so if you want to compute for the maximum height, then use this formula properly. Alright, next one. Let's go to the fourth and final formula that we have right here. The velocity. Alright, so let's replace everything. So Vf, uh, so let's put it right here so to have more space. So Vf sub y, alright, is equal to, or Vf, uh, Vi sub y minus gt squared. Now, as you can see, it is, addition, uh, it is plus over here. It is positive over here. I just change it into negative following the negative sign of our acceleration due to gravity. Now, can we cancel uh, something here? Can we cancel? All right. So, I think it is none. There's no constant speed here. So, therefore, this is now your fourth and final formula. Okay, so this, uh, what is this formula all about? This for uh, this formula that you have right here, if you want to compute for the y velocity, right? So if you want to compute for the y velocity, then you can use this formula over here. So that's it, guys. So we have now your different uh, formulas for different uh, job or different scenarios under your projectile motion. Now we can now solve the projectile motion problem that we have earlier. Alright, so let's take a look at the problem. Okay. Now, a rock is thrown uh, horizontally of 100 meters. It lands 95 meters. At what speed was it thrown? Okay, so what we are looking here is the speed. So prob uh, this is probably the initial velocity. Alright, so this is the initial velocity. Since it was thrown horizontally, that is horizontal velocity. Alright, so uh, as you can see, it is very difficult to answer this problem without any drawing. So that is why I recommend, okay, so I recommend you guys to draw it first before solving the problem. So let's uh, move on to another whiteboard. Okay, so let's have the whiteboard. Okay. Alright, so let's draw the problem. So the object. Uh, was thrown horizontally of the 100 meter clip so some, it looks like this so this is uh, the person who threw the object okay so it was thrown horizontally and it lands all right after it was thrown horizontally it lands uh, 95 meters so this is 95 meters all right from the base of the clip so we have uh, 95 meters then there you are okay there you go now the clip uh, according to the problem the clip was uh, 100 meters high now which one it is right which one it is now the y final all right so the y final is always at the bottom all right where the last position all right this is the final height of the object after it was thrown all right yi on the other hand Right, yi on the other hand is on the top where the object came from. All right, if it is on level ground, it is zero. All right, if it is on level ground, but it is on certain height, so the yi should be on top. So this is uh, 100. So this is the yi should have a 100 uh, meter value. All right, so therefore, the question here is what is the all right. So what is the horizontal speed of the object that was thrown? Now, since this is horizontal, there is no okay, there is no viy since that is the problem is about horizontal speed. So we do not uh, need this viy anymore since it is zero. All right? So in the problem, even though we put something here that is zero because that is horizontal. The object was thrown horizontally. All right, so this is our uh, task to find this one. Okay, so what are the given? Wait, what are the given? So we have the range, which is 95 meters. All right, so we have uh, the YF. All right, so the final height is zero because the object hits the ground, so zero meters. All right, next one, which is uh, the YI is uh, the 100 meters. All right, next, don't, don't forget the acceleration due to gravity. That is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. There you go. So how are we going to solve this one? So let's take a look at the formula that we, you know, that we, okay, so that we got. So, so probably we can use this one, all right? 
So we can use this one because we have a range and we are looking for this. Okay, we are looking for this and what we don't have is the time. Alright, so we will solve for the time. Not this one, but probably this one. Okay, why, why not this why not this formula? It's because this formula doesn't have, uh, our problem doesn't have DIY, so we don't need to use this formula anymore. Alright, so let's use number 1 and number 3 respectively. So, let's go back to the problem. Okay, so where are we? There you go. Okay, so let's go back to the problem. So, we will use the formula. Okay, first, uh, okay, since we cannot use this formula, because we have missing uh, time, two components or two variables are missing, we will use this formula. So we have y sub f is equal to y sub i plus v i y e okay, minus 0. Point, uh, I will make it 0. 0.5 just for simplicity purposes. Alright, so there you go. Now, uh, let's have the... Let's have, uh, let's punch the all or let's put all the values inside this one. All right, so y sub f is zero. All right, so we have uh, okay. So since this is zero, so what we le what we have left is we have y sub i plus v sub i y t minus uh, one half g t squared. There you go. Now, uh, since we don't have v sub i y, so that is cancelled. So what we have left is uh, we have y sub i minus one half g t squared. Now, uh, arranging this formula, arranging this formula will get uh, will give you this formula. So if you arrange this properly, so you will get uh, square root of uh, y sub i over one half g. Okay, so there you go. So the answer here, right? So let's uh, put all the values that we have. So we have uh, 100 over uh, 1 half times 9.81. There you go. All right, so the unit is seconds, right? So the unit is seconds. So the time here is, okay, so the time there is, uh, Okay, so the time here, if you do the math, so we have 4.51 seconds. So there you go. So we have now the time that is needed to be solved or that is needed in this formula. Yeah. Alright, so let's uh, put... Uh, since we are looking for the final velocity or uh, initial velocity at horizontal direction, so we have x is equal to... Okay, x sub f, alright... So x sub f over time. So therefore, so x sub f is 95 meters divided by 4.51 seconds. Alright, so that is the v sub i x. So what will be its answer? So the answer will be our v sub i x on this problem or the, the one that we are looking for is 21.1 meters per second so this is your final answer to this problem all right so that is for the okay that is for the problem about projectile motion an object that is thrown horizontally all right so with that okay we'll go back uh Okay, so that ends up our uh, dis discussion about the concepts of uh, projectile motion Okay. okay, so I hope you did learn something from the projectile motion problem that we worked on. So I have another video for for some sample problems dedicated only for projectile motion. All right, so you just um, you just subscribe to my uh, channel for you to be updated on that. And if you gain or if you learn something from this video, just hit the like button. Okay, so it helps a lot. And subscribe, su subscribe, and click also the notification bell. Okay, if you want to be updated with. Uh, videos like this in the future. Now, if you have question, you just write it down in the comment section and if you have also suggestion, write it down in the comment section of the video below. Alright, so all the all the simulations that we used here, alright, so all the simulations that we used here, I will put it in the description, alright, I, I will put the link on the, 
on the de description of this uh, video. Alright, so basically that's it. So let's see each other on the next video lesson and peace out.